It's minus three degrees in Seoul and fans have been waiting for hours to see their idols. The falling mercury doesn't seem to concern the who's who of Korea's pop music world. They arrive for another awards ceremony and preen for the cameras. You think K-pop does it? Like, oh, it's amazing. Uh, um, yeah. Popular and beautiful. <laughs> They're dancing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Their face and different. <laughs> Big eyes. <laughs> This is what sends young Koreans into a frenzy and has taken the world by storm. Catchy tunes and flashy performances by doe-eyed starlets and dapper pin-up boys. They rarely speak publicly about their penchant for plastic, but cosmetic surgery among K-pop stars is so rampant, it's parodied. The pursuit for perfection extends much further than Korea's entertainment elite. Huayne has just finished high school and her mother has given her a graduation gift, eye surgery. Huayne will be going to university with new friends and new opportunities. Wayne is about to undergo what's called double eyelid surgery. Her surgeon, Dr. Ri Se Wan, will create a second eyelid to make her eyes look bigger. It's one of the most popular procedures here in Korea and I'm told that an increasing amount of teenagers are asking for these procedures straight out of high school just before they head to college. The whole procedure's over in 40 minutes. Wayne will spend a short time in recovery before heading home and will return in a week to have her stitches removed. K-pop stars도 그렇고 많은 연예인분들이 그러니까 예전의 졸업 사진과 지금 현재의 모습을 비교를 해 보면은 훨씬 더 예뻐진 거를 보면 본인들도 그렇게 닮고 싶다는 생각을 할 수밖에 없거든요. 그래서 아마 그런 부분들은 영향을 미치는 Like Wayne, Gina, Sally and Laura are recent high school graduates. They've agreed to meet me to talk about image and plastic surgery. I don't think any celebrity has not retouched a single part of their face. We grab a few magazines and head to a nearby cafe. Yeah, almost everyone gets, especially in like normal high schools, once people graduate, almost all of them get double eyelid surgery yeah. done. Have you ever felt pressure to do it? I mean, I've definitely thought about it. I haven't thought about it in America, but in Korea, like, since so many more people are talking about it, you think like, oh, should I get this done too? Or, yeah. Two of the girls also went to high school in the US and say surgery is driven by an admiration of celebrities. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, like in America, you would right. say, I want skinnier nose, or I want bigger eyes. But in Korea, they would normally say, I want the eyes of whoever. I want the nose of whoever. 
please make my nose into the eyes of the star. So who are we looking at here? There are nine girls and they're in a idol group called Girls, girls Generation. Generation. Did you reckon they signed with Pat Sajan? Yes, definitely. Yes. Definitely. They are known All of them, 100 percent yeah, They are known to have many, many, many plastic surgeries. Many, a yeah. many surgeries. Oh, uh, every time they come, come out, they come do out little with a surgery. New song, their faces change. Right. Eyelid surgery can cost up to $2,000. If you can't afford it, the girls tell me there's another way of getting those coveted big eyes. This is what Koreans call the double eyelid sticker. I've never used it before, but according to my friends, they said this is like the easiest and the cheapest way of making double eyelid. I, um, I took it off, so it looks like a half moon. Okay. I've never done this. Okay, okay, open. <laughs> Wait, did that, did that look? Yes! Look at the difference in their eyes. Really? This is the district of Gangnam, home to K-pop's major entertainment companies. It's also home to South Korea's Beauty Belt, an area with one of the highest concentration of plastic surgery clinics in the world that caters to an ever-increasing foreign clientele. So from here, the entire street are more than 300 plastic surgery clinics. This street alone? Yes, this street alone. This each building has more than three or four plastic surgery clinics. Artist Um Jong So says the rapid growth of Korea's plastic surgery industry is concerning, especially because of its connection to the entertainment world. They send their people from the agency, they can get discount. And from that, they can use their face for the commercial advertisement. Even the subway has become a billboard for cosmetic surgery. They change their facial shape, they cut down their cheekbones and their eyes, and then they uh, make it big eyes like you know front and back and then they uh, put some fat underneath and they did the nose job and then they uh, implant the hair. Unjong knows these passageways well. They inspired her to create an art installation on what she calls Korea's obsession with beauty. They choose one or two types of very beautiful women, ideal face and every woman uh, make turn into exactly the same. Okay, here is my studio with all this work from the exhibition body factories. Uh, every work in here is basically comes down to the people kind of losing their identity. That's why they just treat their body as a product and then they're just losing the meaning of who they are. Do you feel like that's happening as a society here? Yes. Because I've heard it yeah. being described as a plastic surgery obsession. Yeah. Do you think Korea is obsessed with plastic surgery? I think it's not obsessed with plastic surgery. I think they're obsessed with how they look. We're just heading outside Seoul City to meet a man who's had several procedures done to his face, on his jaw, his nose, his eyes. Now, while it's true that more women get plastic surgery here in South Korea, uh, it's by no means exclusive to women. A growing number of men are also getting surgical procedures. At just 21, Hwan Kim has had 17 procedures so far. <laughs> and that's not counting Botox injections and fillers. You know, you don't want to show us these pictures. You're not, you're, why? Why don't you want to show us? Why don't you want to show us? Why don't you want to this is what Juan looked like before he began to reshape his appearance. Yeah. 
Juan has spent $30,000 on cosmetic surgery, and his friends want surgery too. <laughs> Night falls and the city streets come alive. Juan and his friends are getting ready for a night out. He says his cosmetic compulsion is paying off. In another dimly lit room on the other side of Seoul is a very different music world. Playing tonight is an indie band called Love Exterior. Its front woman, Annie, has invited me to watch them perform. She spent years in the pop industry signed to a mainstream entertainment company as a solo artist. In order to make it big, she was told to change her sound and her face. They liked my voice, but they didn't like my appearances. Yeah. So they wanted me to, you know, have plastic surgery here and there. Like nose, my eyes. They occasionally talked about my teeth a lot. Yeah, because I have a very, <laughs> yeah, rabbit teeth. Yeah. So why did you decide against it? Because I like my face. <laughs> and records in its own small rented space. Each member has a second job to support themselves. A small price to pay, says Annie, for creative freedom. Some of the criticisms of K-pop have been that it's um, a very manufactured industry. Yeah, it, absolutely. It is. Um, they they kind of, you know, recruit young kids, like 13, 14, and they make something, they, they kind of, you know, grow them into s in, a, in a certain way, and they kind of cut them uh, along the way and make a group. Here we go, this is Showbiz Korea. K-pop dominates much of Korea's entertainment news. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. We're happy to have you with us. So once again, Showbiz Korea time. Thank you for watching, everyone. Let's have a Adrian nice. Lee hosts Showbiz Korea, a daily entertainment show broadcast around the world on Korea's only English-speaking network, right, Arirang. Everyone. I hope you're having fun here on Showbiz Korea. We have some K-pop news coming your way. Big news, actually. Adrian also hosts his own radio show on Korean culture. He says even though pop stars get surgery to improve their prospects, talent still plays a big part in the K-pop industry. No matter how much plastic surgery you're going to get, that's not going to make you a big star. You really need to have that talent. And then, maybe on top of that, later on you can add like a plus alpha with, you know, a little bit of, of plastic surgery. But I don't think that's initially going to play a big role uh, for you to become a huge star. <laughs> As he shows me around the network, so we, we meet a group series. hoping to become the next and big thing. We just bumped into a group, so they're coming in to, to record a show here at Arirang. Um, so you can see there, the visuals, no? You mentioned stuff about the visuals, the looks. Yeah. You can have a look. This is a, a new group. Can you introduce yourself? Okay, there you go. Great. Now you know more, that's how they introduce oh themselves. God. How are they feeling that so many young people sort of just look up to them and, and, uh, and, and think that they're really attractive? Good. <laughs> they tell me they haven't had any surgery, but as they walk away, I wonder whether that will change. 18-year-old Huayne has returned to her clinic a week after her eye surgery to have her stitches removed. Are you happy? 
Her eyelids are still swollen, but she's very positive about the result. <laughs> <laughs> and mum is also satisfied. <laughs> Ten minutes after arriving, Huayin leaves with new eyes. The first step, I'm told, to becoming beautiful.